Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create. Okay, we've got our book put together and we have our pages done. So I'm gonna go ahead and start installing my pages. Then I'm gonna come back through and decorate the inside. Sometimes I do it the other way around, but today that's what I'm, the plan is. So I'm just looking at this to make sure it's page one. It is page one. Slip that on. I need to make sure that I'm recording. I am. That's good. Oops, it popped out. That's not good. It's hard to it's hard to get it to slip back over when the tape is exposed. But not impossible. There. I did it. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down and look to see if I need to straighten it out any. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. This is a big album. This is page two and Okay, a little bit of housekeeping. This is the widest album format that I've done to date. And I tend to really enjoy working with the, um, the horizontal formats. Okay, I did all that work and where's my hook tool? <laughs> I just had it, you guys. Mm. I should always look there first, it was in the trash. <clears throat> when I go to pick up the white strips, I often pick up the, tip, the, the tool and throw it away with the trash. I need to tape down my craft mat. It keeps moving on me. I love this one. I'm really happy with the way these frames turned out.
Ta-da! We did it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I gotta make some space so I can think. Okay, now we're ready to uh, do the inside liners. Well, actually, let's do the cover first. So, I am going to use this big, beautiful paper from the 12 by 12 because you have to use 12 by 12 because of the size of the album. Uh, yeah. Just making sure it's going right way. And I think this is one of my favorite patterns. That's why I'm using it. I reserved some. So just as a reminder, I used two 12 by 12 DCEs and one eight by eight DCE. And I do have some paper left, but not a whole lot. Because of the scale of the project, I'll have to count how many 12 by 12s I have left. I don't think two 12 by 12s is gonna be enough. I do think you're gonna need that eight by eight pack, but I will try to give you a better estimate of that uh, when I actually completely finish uh, the inside outside. I'll talk to you guys about that in the walkthrough. So see, um, I think it makes for a very nice uh, border, nice clean border. Um, it definitely reduces the weight of the book without having your um, black cardstock over your panel. Okay, now on the back, I'm gonna use this and then I'm going to frame it with something that I don't know what it is right now. <laughs> or am I gonna use two of these? I can't remember. Well, I think I'm gonna use one and then put some blue stripes or blue something on the side. And I don't want it to be um, in the middle. I want it to be to one side or the other. And I think I'm gonna move this pattern toward the outside of the book. It's one of those things, if you're gonna try to center, it has to be precise or go off center, which is just as pleasing, so long as it looks deliberate and not like a mistake. Don't be off center by an eighth of an inch. Be off center by an inch. That looks awfully centered, doesn't it? <laughs> After I just gave that lecture. Okay. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna color block on either side and, you're gonna, and you say, well, look at all that chipboard exposed. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a piece of my black construction tape and run it top to bottom and stop short of the edge and that will become the black backdrop uh, for the next piece that I add. If I covered it with cardstock, that's what would be showing right now. So this is how you solve that problem with um, the construction tape. Sorry, having a hard time getting a grip on it. All it needs to be is an eighth of an inch wide. There we go. Oh, of course, you could have run this strip before you put your paper down, too. Either way. Works either way. Okay, now I'm going to come back and cut that. Good night now. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do the same over here. to the edge and cut a little more off. As long as it's got overlap with um, the frame, you're okay. There we go. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And then whatever I put here, there's our black line, right? Oops, I got a little divot there, so I'm gonna start new, start fresh. 
It feels kind of like masking tape, but it's thinner. Um, I need to move it so I can actually see that I'm getting right next to the pattern. That's just the bump from the uh, glue. Which won't show because we'll have paper over it. But you can see like the texture difference here um, where it's coming up over the tape. That's how thin it is that I can see the tape, you know, below it. It's kind of interesting. Thin but strong. But tears easily when you want it to tear. It tears easily. Oh my gosh. Oh, I did it. I was going to say, oh my gosh, I hope I put it in right side up. And I did. But that was purely uh, by mistake. Okay, so let's get the hinge and the back picked out. So I was planning on using these strips, this strip for the side, but I want to make this decision first. And the other thing I was considering was this. It's just more subtle. Um, what do you guys, what are your thoughts? Should we trim it out and test it? Let's do it. Okay, so it needs to be eight and one eighth tall. This paper is really hard to see my pencil mark on. What do you guys think? This or this? This is more cheerful. This is more subtle. Um, I think I like this. I think this just looks a little bit more elegant. And this paper is quite elegant. So I'm going to go with that. It, so I need to go back and forth a little bit. Okay. I know what to do now. That should do it. That should do it. Yes, it does. Let's get some ink on it. over here. Oops, that's too short.
Okay. I could probably take off. Mm, that's pretty good. I'm going to ink it and we're going to lay it down. Yes, I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this piece here. Yeah, it looks like I need to trim. going to work on the inside. Looks good. There we go, doesn't that look beautiful? Okay, so for the cover, this is uh, one, of, one of the cut-aparts. It's on the same page as these. And um, it had a lace frame around it, which I cut off. Then I backed it with cardstock, and I, could, I left these details on. And then I added a layer of chipboard. So that's gonna go on here. But I'm also going to add these triangles because that's what the whole album is about. I'm going to add them to the bottom and to the top and I'm going to overlay this slightly so I need to have a little bit of a plan. I'm going to use this uh, to elevate that so it's uh, closer to even. You can see how big it is. It's sitting on a 12 by 12 mat. Um, and because I do want the corner of this to overlay on both sides think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my triangles down first. And I'll give you the measurement of this as soon as I lay this one down, I'll measure the other one. And tell you where what I'm doing in terms of coming in from the edge. The first triangle is three quarters of an inch away from the corner. Three quarters of an inch. The triangle itself is three inches across the bottom. And it's four inches tall. So it's three inches, four inches. So you have an isosceles triangle. And then, so once you have your three, mark it, your center line at one and a half, and then just cut to your corners. Okay. 
Nope, that's too far. Okay, I think that's what I like. So you'll do two of those in, in orange. Either pattern's fine, but it needs to be orange. I tried blue, it didn't look right. Okay, there we go, that looks good. Okay, so I think we're ready to go ahead and lay this piece down. This is just spare chipboard left from the project. It's centered top to bottom. from one of the pages is just full of stamps. Um, so I went through and chose the stamps that are just like what's on here, added a piece of chipboard, and I'm gonna pop them. I'm gonna lay them right on top of that. This is gonna need a second layer of chipboard. So I just need a little piece. And it needs two layers on this side because there's a layer here, a layer here. So that's two. That'll level things out. And that dimension, I think, makes it a little more interesting. Okay, there we go. Now I think I'm gonna play around with a couple of triangles and see if we need to put something over here to create a little bit more balance. It is very wide. So I cut out some black ones. We can use it either way. It could be black or the cream. And then I also have this pattern. I think that's too much on that side. If anything, I would add one here and I like this better, shows up more. So the other color we could consider or is another orange, but with a different pattern. Let's see, this is three. I'm gonna cut one out real quick. Just needs to be smaller. That's the other thing. Okay, I need this. And this. because it'll hold the paper better. What do you guys think? I'm not sure. I'm going to fuss around with this a little bit and you guys are going to see what my final decision is. I'm going to add some black cardstock. 
possibly scale these down and then see what I think. Um, but for now, I'm going to call it done. So you'll see those details in, um, I'm going to call this part done anyway. You'll see those details in the walkthrough, but I am going to add something to the spine. So open it up. And I've already got, I've got chipboard, I've got stickers, I've got a lot of stuff, so it's just a matter of finding the right thing, right size. I like that. From a size, oh, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. And then I've also got some circles that I could add to the front um, to soften things up. Yeah, I definitely like that. I'm going to bring it down a little, though. This is a piece of chipboard. And you'll have plenty of chipboard because, oh, I forgot to ink something. And I can see the white core. Um, because I'm using two DCEs, I got a lot of stickers and a lot of chipboard to use as embellishments throughout. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I figure some some things out here, um, but for now I'm going to go ahead and and call it. And when I get back, if I've made any uh, additional changes, I'll point those out in the walkthrough. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. Be back soon. Whoops! I opened the book and just realized we hadn't done the inside liner, so I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, I cut these um, papers out, and I had two of them, so I went ahead and trimmed one for the front and one for the back. And I think what I'm gonna do is split them in half so that we have half and half. So, and when I say split them in half, I'm gonna, of course, do it on a diagonal <laughs> just to make it interesting. So let's see what we're gonna do. So let me trim it down just a little bit. It is. Or do I? It's a little bit. Okay. Okay, that should be the right height. Sorry, I'm gonna get some of this out of our visual space. Okay, I like it. So, I'm going to trim it on a diagonal. And then I'm gonna tell you what it is. This is what I've got. So this is eight and three quarters on this side. Five and three quarters on this side, okay? Now I'm gonna take the same print and repeat that so that I'm gonna put it in the trimmer this this side up rather than this side up, and then I should have the two pairs. Is that right? Yes, that's right.
and there we go. Now you could do that with any pattern you, you have, right? So if you wanted to do it with the blue instead of this, it's you know entirely up to you, but it's the same idea. So what you're going to want to do is, uh, sorry, whatever two papers that you want up, make sure that you put them together face up and you can put them in the trimmer and trim uh, all together. And then you're gonna put this, move this one to the back and move this one to the, to the back, okay? So there you go. And this is what I'm going to use. Now, I do think I want um, a black strip in here. So I'm gonna put a line where I want my strip and then I'm gonna add that and then we'll glue these down. I'm gonna do it a different order as we did on the front. So I just know I want my the center line of my black tape to go over that. Oh, poo. <clears throat> of course, all that needs to be ink still too. So I'm going to trim a little bit more off so I can back off a little bit and not be over the edge. Perfect. Let's get some glue or some ink and some glue on here.
I forgot to put down the tape first. That's okay. That's okay. I do it afterwards. back right side up again Pretty cool. It was nice to do something a little different. I hope you guys enjoyed. Okay, next time I get back together with you guys, we'll be doing the walkthrough and I'll be sure to point out any embellishments that I add between now and then so that you can refer back to the walkthrough as you complete your album. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. If you would take a moment to like, share, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Um, I wanna thank you again for spending some time with us over here at Scrap and Create. See you soon.